Welcome to Rossville Valley Community Church. <laughs> what a blessed day it is. Look how good the weather is. I walked out, I walked out on the front porch coming down here, and I was just like, Lord, thank you. How could the day get any better without a beautiful weather to go with it? Well, you notice that we have a, a visitor with us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is Mr. Howard Quash. He has uh, accepted the call as the pastor of Rossville Valley Community Church. And, uh, Man, first day here, he's ready to go. He is just, uh, he is just excited, and, and I tell you, I've been just bragging on him and bragging on him week after week, but you get the real thing this week. <laughs> Not my version of him. <laughs> so it's awesome. Would you like to say a, a, a word of uh, anything, Howard, while we're up here? <laughs> you'll, you'll get to hear me talk a little more uh, in the latter part of the service, but... Uh, family, we are so blessed to be here. Uh, that's the, to say the least, but uh, we're excited and looking forward to meeting y'all. Uh, hope you stick around after worship so I can get a chance to know, know you. Thanks. Yeah, that's right. We're all going to have a hard time focusing today with all the smells coming from back there. So uh, yeah, if you, if you didn't come hungry, it's a bad day to come not hungry. Uh, there's <coughs> all, come, all kinds of a, a feast and everything back here to celebrate this day. Uh, let's open this morning with a word of scripture. And this comes from Ephesians uh, chapter 1 and it's verses 11 through 23. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also when you heard the word, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord, Jesus, and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Having the eyes of your hearts in light, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills in all. Amen. I can't, what can you say to a passage like that? It's awesome. That's why we're here. We're here to worship this awesome God, this awesome Savior, Jesus Christ, and this Holy Spirit that fills each of us as we go through this day together. We are, we are just blessed to be here as this church family to worship our risen Lord. Amen. Well, if we have any, uh, are there any announcements that we need to go through this morning besides the obvious we have food today? <laughs> any other announcements? Well, hearing none, let's prepare to worship our risen Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, we give you thanks for this awesome day in the life and the history of this church. Oh, Father, we have waited so long for this day. And, Father, we have waited faithfully and patiently on your timing, on your will, on everything, Lord, that you have ahead of us to give to us. Father, we thank you for this day that we, we join with our, with our pastor and his family, that you have brought them here. You have given them safe travels. You've given them housing. You've given them all that they need, Lord, to to assume your work here in this valley and to make your word known amongst our, 
our residents around here and, and Lord, across the world, Lord, through the, the miracle of all the, the technology we have now. Father, we thank you. We come to you today asking your help, your strength, your peace in all we do here today. Lord, that we may worship you, that we may raise your name high above all names as it belongs. Father, may we all focus upon you today, upon your goodness, upon your, upon your power, upon your authority. And Father, just be with us each thing we do, our songs, our prayers, the meditations of our heart, the preaching of your word. Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and let's be called to worship. God of all the saints, you surround us with a cloud of witnesses. We give you thanks. May your Holy Spirit sanctify us and perfect us in love. Risen Christ, you come to us in the humble and the rejected. We give you thanks. May your Holy Spirit sanctify us and perfect us in love. Holy Spirit, you live and breathe in us so that we too may be your saints for the sake of the world. We give you thanks, Holy Spirit. Sanctify us and perfect us in love, in the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Please remain standing and we'll sing our first hymn this morning. This is Holy, 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 and it's number two in your hymnal. may be seated. We'll go into our time of prayer together now, and uh, we will always open up with our prayer of confession. Uh, as I've iterated before, you know, we kind of follow the, the ACTS um, process of prayer, A-C-T-S, and uh, confession is always second after adoration, and uh, we just, uh, then we give thanks, and then we give supplication. So, 
We will come to our time of suppl- thanks and supplication shortly, but let's go into our time of confession. To call us into confession this morning, uh, please hear the words of Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And that's what happens. Our enemy tries to come and take the place of God. And all he tries to put all kinds of little gods in front of us. And those things sometimes distract us and get in our way. And we have to admit that. And so we'll go to God now in our time of confession silently, and then we'll pray together as a body. Let us pray. Let's pray together. God, we confess we often act only on our own behalf, not as agents of your holy purposes for love, healing, and justice. Forgive our selfishness. Heal our fears. Sanctify us for the work of love. And renew us in the holy light of your spirit, that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may fulfill your delight according to the mystery of your power in us. Amen. Hear this assurance from pardon also from 2 Thessalonians. This is of chapter 2, verses 13 to 17. But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he calls you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, Comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. And that's what he does, right? He, he establishes us. He gives us his peace through his grace. And it's by his grace that we are forgiven. Amen. Let's go into our time of, uh, of prayer with the, called the prayers of the people. And this is, like I said, where we bring to God our thanks, our supplications, those things that are on our hearts that, that we can bring to God at any point in our lives. He is always, he was always open to receiving our prayers. Let us go and pray. Father, we give you thanks for this awesome gift, this awesome privilege, Lord, to stand before you in your very own throne room as it would be. Lord, as we come together in this church, as your body, as your children, as those, Lord, who rely upon you every day for every breath we take, for every morsel of food that we that we take in for every drop of water, Lord, that keeps us hydrated and alive. Lord, they are all gifts from you. And Father, we come to you today giving thanks for all those things, giving thanks, Lord, that you can do whatever is good and, and holy in your eyes in our lives. Lord, we come to you now with our prayers, our supplications, 
our thanks, and, and Lord, that you would just hear our prayers this morning. Lord, we lift up Bryce this week he goes through training. We pray, God, that you would uh, bless him and protect him, keep him in your care, and, Lord, bring him through this, uh, this next challenge of his life. We pray these things, Lord, in, in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we do lift up the, the Quash family to you as they assume this great and awesome call into the ministry of your word to your people. Lord, we need not take this lightly. Lord, it's not just merely a job or a title, Lord, but it's a, it's a definite calling of one human being and his family to come and serve you with, with their lives. Father, we thank you for this journey that you have brought them through. We thank you, Lord, for every step of the way, Lord, to your provision for them, for us, for all the things, Lord, that have made this day come to be. Lord, we praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we do lift up, uh, up Jim and, and thank you, Lord, for, for your healing power for him, Lord, that you have brought him through this surgery, that he is here and on his feet today. Lord, what a, what a miracle it is. And God, that you have just uh, provided him with the care and the, and the reparative uh, surgery, Lord, that he is, has needed to, to get himself back in, in shape. And Father, we thank you for that. We thank you also for for Katie being here with us, as we know that she has had a long road as well. And God, we just lift her up to you as she travels this week uh, down to Raleigh, that you would give her your, your grace, and Lord, that you would just be with her every, every mile of the way and protect her and, and make her way clear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we lift up Doug as well as he, as he heads out to, uh, to go be with his mother and to take care of some of her business. And God, we know that, that traveling is, is, can be a little uh, stressful at times in these days with, with all the cars on the road. And God, we just pray for, for traveling mercies for him, that you would uh, be with him and protect him and uh, make his way uh, clear and, and uh, enjoyable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we do lift up Ralph as he uh, recovers from his, from his surgery, and God, that you would just uh, provide healing for him and his wife, Sarah. Lord, give them strength and, and peace throughout this healing process. God, that you would just, uh, just restore him. Uh, give them, Lord, the, the time and the, and the, uh, the recovery, Lord, that, that, they so, that they so need. Father, we put them in, and trust them into your hands. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord, 
Lord, we lift up uh, Linda and Warren, God, as they both uh, go through health issues right now. God, we just pray for your, for your healing upon them, for your care for them. And Father, we just pray that you would help them to uh, be able to continue to live in their home independently. And uh, God, that your care would just be with them. We thank you, Lord, that we can bring any and everyone to your, uh, into your care and, and Lord, that you can just, you can do it. You are the, the master healer of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we do pray for this election process coming up this week, and uh, Lord, we just pray that, that your will would be done, Lord, that the leaders that you have elected already would take rule, and God, that this nation would see it. We would be one nation under God, and that we would repent of our, of our sins, that we would, as a nation, turn to you and seek your will in our lives every day. And we pray your blessings on the, on the folks working at the polls, on the, the candidates, Lord, and, and for everything involved in this process, and for the voters. Lord, Lord, just put your will on their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we do give you great thanks for this awesome day. Father, we are humbled by your goodness to us. For we know, Lord, that on our own we, we, we don't deserve what you give us, but God, you, you open the floodgates of your goodness on us every single day. We thank you, Father. We give you all glory and honor and praise. Lord, we lift up those who could not be with us today for one reason or the other, whether they're, whether they're traveling or whether under the weather, uh, whatever it is, Lord, uh, we just pray for your protection over them. We pray for your healing for those who are sick. And Lord, we just uh, we thank you, Lord, that we are a, a great family, a great family of your children. And Father, that, that you are our promised hope, that you are our promised eternity. And Lord, that we know that through our Savior, we can come and spend our eternity in heaven with you. Lord, we thank you for your great promises. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your saving grace upon that cross, for what you have done for each of us who call upon you and call you our Savior. Lord, we know that is by your blood we are forgiven. Lord, we lift up those who are risking their lives and their health today to protect us, to keep us, to keep us well, to keep us protected from, from enemies. And Lord, we just, uh, we just ask that you would be with, with each one who is ready at a moment's notice to respond, the, the EMTs and the first responders, the policemen, the firemen, Lord, the doctors and nurses at the hospitals, the armed forces, Lord, who are out protecting our borders, not only here, but in foreign lands. God, we just thank you for all these people, these brave and selfless people, Lord, who, who give themselves to these careers and these positions. We lift up our leaders, Lord, that you would, as we said in our voting process, Lord, that you would uh, speak to the hearts of the leaders of, of not only this nation, but uh, the nations around the world. God, that we would be humble, and bow before you, the almighty creator and God of all things. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this great opportunity. And Lord, now prepare our hearts to receive your word, to receive what you have for us to, to take in from you today. We thank you for this day, and, and we thank you for the words we are about to hear. Now hear our voices as we lift them up as one, praying in the way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, with great honor, I'll invite Pastor, Pastor Howard Quash to the pulpit this morning. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Two clicks. Good morning, everyone. Wow. It's, uh, I, uh, I feel a little starstruck seeing y'all, not just the back of your heads from watching some of the YouTube videos from worship, but the front of your faces. Um, so it's, it's a delight to finally be here. <clears throat> this morning, a uh, scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. First Corinthians chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 1 to 5. Paul writes, And I, when I come to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and, much, and in much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. <clears throat> well, again, it's uh, an honor and, honor and privilege to be here today. My family and I have been looking forward to this for quite some time now. Me behind the pulpit, my family in the pews and technically now in nursery, um, and to live with and among God's people who worship here in this, uh, to quote some non-Christian neighbors, for us to worship here in this pretty white church building with the bells. Uh, <clears throat> those are dark quotes. And today isn't a typical sermon. Normally what you can expect, Lord willing, uh, is a teaching from, a typical sermon would be a teaching from scripture where Jesus Christ is proclaimed, where he's preached. Um, today, instead, it's more of a testimony about Christ in my life that's more inspired by the passage that we just read today, not quite a walk-through exposition of the passage, but I will use it uh, as a springboard to share a little bit more about myself and my family, you know, to help flesh out some of the details uh, that we had shared in that introduction video uh, that we made for y'all when we met together for the congregational meeting where y'all voted on a candidate to be your next pastor. And I'm so humble that I am he. So let me, let me use the, uh, what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians as just a general outline for today. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 2 is the what. What the Apostle Paul claimed, proclaimed. And verse 3 is the how, or the manner in which he did it. And verse 4 to 5 is the why. Why the Apostle Paul came to the Corinthians in that way. So what we'll do is start with the Apostle's letter first, and then into the testimony part. So first, the what. What Paul had determined already was what to proclaim and what to shy away from. So this is what he proclaimed. Right? A Jewish rabbi from a small town up north whose followers proclaimed as their king probably didn't capture a lot of ancient Greco-Roman city uh, headlines, right? Not to mention a king who didn't really have a kingdom in the normal sense. 
and the king who was humiliated when the government sanctioned death penalty reserved for the worst of the worst criminals were executed on him. Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. That's what Paul determined to proclaim, and this is gospel, right? Not a typical conversation at the dinner table. In those days, what would a typical dinner conversation, what would that look like? What would they talk about? Well, the Greco-Roman culture, they loved great speakers, rhetoricians, and there are different schools and lots of followers in each of these schools. The best ones were the proud ones who could eloquently argue any side of the argument regardless of whether or not they believed in it themselves. So you were honored if you could what y'all might have learned in high school uh, oral, communications, oral communications class, logos, pathos, and ethos to persuade an audience. Right? So let me put it this way. You were the talk of the town if you could do a TED Talk. Right? <laughs> but the Apostle Paul, knowing the culture since he himself was a Roman citizen, didn't do any of that when he came to the Corinthians. When he came to them, what he said and how he said it was counter-cultural. When he came to them, he had already determined to preach Christ and him crucified. What that is is foolishness to Gentile sensibilities. When he came to them, he came to them in weakness and not in, quote, plausible words of wisdom. How that is, is with fear and trembling. Nonverbal communication that makes you a, not a great speaker. But the foolishness and weakness of the message and the messenger of the gospel is exactly how God ordained the way he would save people. Even from within a genuinely wise and savvy and powerful culture like the Corinthians. Do you know this message, this gospel? And if not, I'd be more than happy to talk to you more about it. Now, that's the Apostle Paul when he came to them. That's the inspiration for the rest of today's testimony, which has the what's and the how and the why as I come to you, Riceville Valley. I think you'll hear foolishness. I think you'll hear weakness. And yet, God ordains someone like me to be a teaching elder in the Evangelical Presbyterian Church and calls me to minister to his church in a valley in Western North Carolina. I come to you from Maryland. I was born and raised in, a, right next, in the county right next to the nation's capital. I was raised in a non-Christian home. Uh, both parents of mine uh, are Chinese, but they were born and raised in Vietnam. They came to the States as refugees from the Vietnam War in the mid to late 70s. <clears throat> and knowing this little detail about my family is important because ethnically Chinese folks living in other Southeast Asian countries, they maintain their Chinese identity in foreign countries by practicing traditional cultural and religious Chinese rituals. That's because a little bit of a, little bit of a history here uh, of the East is that they didn't have to go through what's called the communist cultural revolution in the 1960s that the Chinese folks had to suffer through. Therefore, I grew up honoring my ancestors. Sometimes you might hear that described as ancestor worship. Though growing up, we never thought of it that way. <clears throat> we prayed simple prayers for blessing and protection. We burned incense. And during 
religious holidays uh, following this elaborate lunar calendar, we also got to eat delicious foods offered to uh, the ancestors and different kinds of Chinese folk religion gods. <clears throat> One example is having a whole pig at the house, roast pork, deep fried with really crispy skin. It was delicious growing up. <clears throat> and then when I, when I became a Christian, whenever there was a chance where we talk about missions or cross-cultural things or evangelism, the first thing I would share is, hey, if you want to experience some cross-cultural stuff, why don't you just come on over to my house? Uh, idols, statues of idols, hey, we got them. Um, <clears throat> Food sacrifice to idols, we got them, and it's good. So my, uh, my dad became one of my ancestors, so to speak, 10 years ago. He was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer, and he died under one year. <clears throat> and his death and his funeral, because I had to work through what it meant to honor my father as a Christian. And it still affects me both emotionally and spiritually today because ethnic identity was tied to religious practices in my family. Christianity to, Christianity to me, before I was a Christian, it wasn't foolish like it was to the, the Corinthians. The problem I had with Christianity was that it was too Western. I was too Chinese. So after I graduated from college from the University of Maryland, where I, where I graduated with a business and computer science degree, one of my cousins invited me to an, an outreach program called Alpha. Since folks here seem to be very familiar with topography and what landmarks and trees and flowers and things like that, <clears throat> I wanted to share that he lived south of the Potomac River in Virginia, and he'd drive up to Maryland to pick me up and attend Alpha with me. Cousin Tony treated me like a younger brother. During one of these Alpha meetings, a member asked a set of rhetorical questions. Do y'all know Kirk Cameron by any chance, Way of the Master? Yeah? Okay, great. See some nods. So <clears throat> it was uh, the Way of the Master, like. He asked, this member asked, how many times do you have to steal to be a thief? How many times do you have to kill to be a murderer? How many times do you have to sin to be a sinner? And in front of the whole group, like half joking, I raised my hand and said, well then, well then I'm guilty. And that was the rated G answer to my answer, rated G version to my answer. But after I said that, in that moment, the Holy Spirit used my half joke to put the weight of sin on my shoulders. And then I instantly realized why I needed Jesus. After I was, after I was baptized and made some Christian friends, <clears throat> they'd ask, hey, HQ, HQ being my initials, hey, HQ, how can we pray for you? And then I would answer in good old preacher fashion with three points. <clears throat> I'd say, Please pray the triple H's for me, and that being health, helper, and holy ambition. <clears throat> so <clears throat> regarding my health, I'm a kidney transplant patient twice over. I was diagnosed with kidney failure in the fourth grade, and then once that happened, I had to uh, go on a low-sodium, low-protein diet. And yeah, it's as bland as it sounds. Um, and then I was on that for a few years. And then when middle school came around, I hit end stage renal failure. Then I had to go on dialysis. And I had to go on the kind of dialysis that's called peritoneal dialysis. It's the kind of dialysis that usually you don't think of when someone mentions dialysis. You know, when you have to go to DeVita or some kind of dialysis center where <clears throat> You uh, get the blood pumped out of you, cleansed, and watch it come back into your body. My kind of dialysis is where I had to do it 10 hours a day, 10 hours at night, every night in bed at home. And if anyone is curious about those details and how all that works, 
feel free to ask me, I suppose, after we eat. <laughs> um, dialysis, though, that didn't go really well. There were a lot of complications, and then it started to hurt. It got to the point where my mother couldn't handle seeing her, his son, her son suffer. And so in 1995, uh, summer before high school, my mom got tested up to be a donor, and she donated one of her kidneys to me. That kidney lasted a long time, 16 years. It blew away all of the statistics. Finally, when that kidney failed, because all you need is really one kidney to work, thank God for redundancy, um, my brother flew in from uh, out, out of state, all the way from the West Coast, flew in and donated one of his. I'm, the last couple of years of those 16 years uh, was a hard and dark and depressing time for me. And I was weary, to say the least. But I am totally blessed to have as normal of a lifestyle as I do today. I try to stay healthy and careful around germs and especially around this virus that seems to be popular that does capture news headlines because I have to take anti-rejection medicine where the medicine suppresses my immune system to prevent the too smart for its own good immune system from attacking the foreign organ in my body that's ironically keeping the rest of the body alive. But God's been so kind to me to sustain my health. The first H, prayer request for HQ. In the same year, I had my second kidney transplant in 2011. That's when I um, married my wife, Sarah. She grew up in Western North Carolina Growing up between uh, Asheville and Charlotte, we were driving around Asheville uh, this weekend, and all these memories of places kind of flood, like resurfaced. And uh, she had a huge smile, talking to me about Tunnel Road. So <clears throat> uh, she also lived in Rutherford County, uh, which is also where my in-laws are right now. She's the second of eight children. Uh, when she was 16, the whole family, all 10 of them, packed their bags into a 12-passenger van, drove down to central Mexico as missionaries to start a Christian camping ministry. And they were there, uh, her in-laws were there for almost 20 years. Sarah and I met when she came back to the States and worked in Maryland. Sarah tends to say, we met at, ch we met at church I tend to be a little more specific and say, oh, well, we met at a Christian mixer. And I tend to elaborate a little more uh, by saying, we were part of a large singles ministry at church, about 500 of us. Her housemate hosted this mixer <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, to watch uh, the Washington Capitals hockey game. I met her at the group dinner <clears throat> before the game and I made sure to sit next to her at the game. Ironically, ironically, neither one of us actually really like hockey, but it was the best 40 bucks both her and I ever spent. God was so kind to me by bringing Sarah, my beloved helper, the second H prayer request for HQ into my life. We're now building a home together with three young children whom you might have heard. <laughs> Uh, Rosalind, who's four years old, Margaret, who's uh, three years old, and Tommy, who's one. And we call them by their shorter names, uh, and feel free to do the same, Rosie, Maggie, and Tommy. And occasionally you'll hear me say something in Chinese to them, and that's usually uh, older, or younger brother or older sister, eldest sister and elder sister in Chinese. <clears throat> Since my conversion, I've grown in ways that can only be explained by God working in my life. Because before God, I was pretty much a TV and video games guy. After God, I started, I started to read. I started to read for fun. 
I had a blast learning about and reading the Bible and theology to the point where I started taking classes lo- uh, part-time at the local seminary, at Reform Seminary down in uh, Virginia. And after God blessed me with new health and the supportive, patient, and loving helper, I promise she didn't tell me to include those uh, things, we left Maryland for me to attend Westminster Theological Seminary full-time. And that's where I started to write papers with passing grades. And that was a God thing because uh, English 101 in college, after handing in my first paper, the professor handed back my paper with a grade and asked me very politely, Howard, is English your second language? Humbling to say the least. So here am I all because of God. Yeah. Oh, sure, thanks. I'll take that. It's that obvious, huh? Thank you. God was and continues to be so kind to me to pursue my holy ambition. The third H, prayer request for HQ. First academically at seminary, and now vocationally as your pastor. Now, about my holy ambition, I'd first like to tell you what I'm not ambitious about. I'm not ambitious about being a CEO of a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, There's no career ladder I'm trying to climb where being your pastor is just a means to an end. And I don't have any uh, personal business plans to create HowardQuatchMinistries.com where I would plaster my aging yet carefully edited and filtered photograph of my face everywhere on the internet. I am, however, moved and motivated to being a pastor. And that's what made your job description, Riceville, so moving to me. It was simple. It was just half a page, not a single bullet-pointed list. And there were just four things listed that the pastor would be responsible for. A weekly sermon, Christian education, visitation, and community outreach. When I saw that, I was shocked. Wait, this church wants someone to preach, teach, and live life with and among people? Is this for real? That this church actually wants a pastor and not a director or coordinator of religious activities, programs, and events? After that, Sarah and I prayed. And at that point, Riceville, you had been praying. I filled out forms. I took written exams. I took oral exams. And after that, at the first called meeting of the Presbytery of the Central Carolinas, they approved me to be a pastor. I get to be your pastor. And a quick book of order footnote, I'm sure uh, <clears throat> Mike appreciates this. I technically get to be ordained and installed as your pastor just a couple months down the road in January where other elders come here for service and everything gets done like good Presbyterians do, decently and in order. Uh, in the meantime, I'm your de facto pastor. Uh, you can guarantee that. So that's my testimony. Not so much like the Apostle Paul saying to the Corinthians, reflecting back when I came to you, but instead, today, that's me as I come to you. With my health, my helper, and now my family, and my holy ambition. That however long, with whatever tenure I have here at Riceville, And however long the to-do list expands for the pastor, I pray, please pray for me too, that I stay faithful to preach and teach Jesus Christ and him crucified 
and in such a way that demonstrates the powerful Holy Spirit is the one who convicts, who compels, and who changes people. And all of this for the same why as the Apostle Paul, as he writes in verse 5, so that your faith might not rest in human wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's me. That's who I am as I come to you. That's my testimony to God, who has and continues to work in my life. And I'm eager, looking forward to listening to your soon. To God alone be the glory. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we continue to speak words from our hearts of our gratitude to you for your blessings in our lives individually and as a church corporately. Lord, we've entrusted <laughs> into your providential hand, your caring hand, the life, the health of your church. Oh God, we pray for your continued blessing that the weeks, the months, and the years from now on, the folks would be nourished, would be refreshed by your gospel. And for those who know Riceville, because of the building, a beautiful building, Lord, I pray folks around here who don't know you yet would know the people who have been changed by the power of your gospel and that they would also come and to be faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. Let's stand to sing our closing hymn. gathered today as a church
to worship him and to be refreshed by his Holy Spirit. Now as you go back, as the church scatters back to wherever you're, you are called to be salt and light, be recommissioned once again with a blessing from the Lord. May God the Father fill you with the spirits of the risen Jesus so that you may be occupied with his presence. May his comforts cheer you in your sorrows, his strength sustain you in your trials, his blessings revive you in your weariness, his presence render you a fruitful tree of holiness, his might establish you in peace and in joy, his incitements make you ceaseless in prayer, and his animation kindle in you undying devotion. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. Yes, don't scatter too far. I think um, to the fellowship hall. <laughs>